Today's stories, Perth stuns with 5% growth during the December quarter. Uh, employment is the key to the soft landing in the markets of Sydney and Melbourne, and rents grow and vacancies tighten across Australia. These are the top stories for this week in real estate. G'day guys, my name is Tim Guest. We're bringing you all the news that you need to know to stay up to date and keep your finger on the pulse in terms of happening in real estate around the country. So our top story, Perth, 5% growth during the December quarter. Uh, so the median house price increased by 5.2% to $510,000 during the December 2018 quarter from figures released by Rewa uh, just yesterday. Uh, the REWA data shows that the Perth's median house price increased significantly during the December quarter and actually brought it back on par uh, with the December 2000 uh, quarter median. Now, REWA President Damien Collins said that Perth's median house price dropped below $500,000 for the first time in six years during the December 2018 quarter. This is likely due to a shift in the composition of sales during that quarter. And pleasingly, the median house price has rebounded back to $510,000 this quarter, which is a lot more consistent with the stable prices that have been observed in the Perth market over the past 18 months. The Reba.com analysis actually showed that 69 suburbs in Perth experienced an increase in the median price during the December 2018 quarter, and that the suburbs that experienced the highest amount of growth were um, Cannington, Coodnup, Carronup, Beaconsfield, and Hillary's. At the same time, there was a slight drop off in sales activity, um, but that's uh, pretty consistent with this time of year, as a lot of people tend to slow down into the lead up to Christmas. We also saw a 10% decrease. G'day Garth, welcome to the, uh, to, to the Facebook Live, mate. Uh, we also saw a 10% decrease in the time that it actually took to sell properties as well. So once again, all these, this, this data and figures is uh, consistent with what a lot of experts have been talking about um, over the past sort of six months as we start to see Perth is definitely in the recovery mode. Um, and for those of you that are either looking to buy a home or invest in Perth, you, know, you want to get moving before, uh, before things start to move too far. All right, second story that we've got today is that what we've seen is um, employment is the key to a soft landing, primarily both in the, the Sydney uh, and Melbourne markets, which really are, are the two of only three capital city markets which are actually in decline at the moment. Um, so high employment is the key factor in keeping Australian property markets strong in the face of price decline in Sydney and Melbourne. This is according to the lender Bank West. Uh, Bank West Managing Director Rowan Muchenberg says that provided employment continues to be as strong as it is, the price correction in the biggest cities will not create any problems. Happy New Year to, to you too, mate. Um, uh, employment still remains high, and while that, that is the case, despite flat wage growth, it will be the key for economic prosperity and the ability for people to pay off their debt. And that's what uh, the Managing Director says. While unemployment remains low, we're in a good place. Internally, Bank West, they plan for multiple scenarios of what's around what's happening in the marketplaces and what's happening with house prices, whether it be a further declines um, or being level or some increases. And we're not seeing anything, they're saying that they're not seeing anything in particular in Melbourne or Sydney uh, where the market's actually falling off a cliff despite some of the, uh, the media um, doom and gloom that they like to uh, they like to put out there. Same time, realestate.com chief economist uh, Nerida Connorsby says tighter lending and negative sentiment have caused lower house prices in some cities, but she expects the low jobless rate to help big cities ride out the downturn. We're not seeing the big jumps in the listings that are typical of a price crash. Um, she also says that with APRA winding back the cap on interest only loans in December, it's a first sign that it'll actually start to get easier to borrow. As we all, Garth, so Garth said it's uh, good to hear that the, the Perth market's picking back up. Uh, like myself and, and many of our clients and followers who either have property or investments in Perth, it's good news for everyone. Uh, also, what we're seeing is really strong um, growth when it comes to, or strong growth when it comes to uh, uh, rents across six ca capital cities. And we're also seeing vacancy rates tighten across most capital cities as well. So six of the eight capital cities delivered growth in their rentals in 2018, and that was both for houses and for apartments. There is, as always, a strong correlation between vacancy rates and rental growth, um, and the cities with the tightest rental markets, i.e. Hobart and Canberra, are the ones that had the highest annual growth in their rentals. So Canberra now has the highest average house rents in the nation, which have gone up by 3.7% to $560 per week. That's actually overtaken Sydney, where average rents have fallen. The other cities with low vacancies, so Adelaide and Melbourne, have also recorded solid growth in their rentals, and two cities where vacancy rates have previously been high uh, in the 
uh, vacancy rates have been high in the recent past but have improved recently, Brisbane and Perth. So they're also delivering moderate growth in their rents around about 2 to 3% during 2018. This is certainly something that we're noticing with our clients and in our, uh, Infinite has a real estate business as well, we're starting to see, you know, 5 10 $15 increases in a lot of the, uh, the, the leases uh, for, with tenants. The only cities where rents have fallen in the past year are those where vacancies are trending higher, and that's primarily in Sydney and Darwin. So the vacancies remain tight in most capital cities, but despite seasonal rises in vacancies in December, and this is according to the latest data by SQM Research, most cities have vacancies similar to or less than those at the same time last year. So Hobart continues to have the tightest rental market with a vacancy rate of just 0.4%. Man, you, uh, you wouldn't want to be looking for a rental in that capital city. And Canberra and Adelaide both have vacancy rates of just a little over 1%. Melbourne's vacancy rate was, uh, uh, was around 2% in December, which was the same as a year earlier. And Brisbane's rate has improved considerably over the past year, falling from 3.8 to 3.2. Probably the biggest drop is in Perth, where vacancies have dropped from 4.6% to 3.4%. Four. The only city where vacancies are trending uncomfortably high levels are Sydney, where they've risen from 2.6% to 3.6%, uh, and Darwin, which is up from 3.5 to 4.3. So guys, that covers off the uh, top stories uh, in real estate this week. Once again, stay tuned. Uh, twice a week, do live broadcasts, The Week in Real Estate, and also Tim's Two Cents is where I'll answer any of your questions, whether it be a, a question related to your own personal financial circumstances, whether you want some guidance, whether you've got questions about finance, investment, real estate, money management. Uh, if you either comment in the, uh, the below, then I can get back to you guys in one of our live broadcasts and answer those questions. And of course, the one thing that we'd love for you guys to do is to share this post on your timeline. I wanna to continue to provide you guys with fantastic value, make it worth my while, so by allowing this to get out there and impact as many people as possible so that they can take advantage of it and live the life they really want. Guys, that's it from me for Friday, the 19th of January. Have a fantastic weekend, and I look forward to talking to you guys next week. Have a great weekend.